Hello everybody, I am Nico D, so I have got access to a ROG 5. So this is the new Raksha SBC with the RK3588. This is a test board, so things might change for the released boards. But I can already tell you some things that I found out. So first let's take a look at the specs of this board. So I will begin at the top. So the MIPI CSI, then the GPIOs, then MIPI DSI. Then user LED power button, recovery button, power LED, M.2 E key, so for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Then the SOC, so the RK3588, SD card reader, Ethernet Phi, the RAM, the RJ45, so this is 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 2 times USB 3, 2 times USB 2, and then 2 times HDMI. Then USB-C for power, a headphone jack, a fan header, RTC header, EMMC sockets and boot mode button. Then on the bottom we see the M.2 key for an SSD or an NVMe. On the right there is the HDMI input, the SPI flash and the audio codec. So as I already told you, this comes with the ROG chip RK3588 SOC. So this has got 4 times Cortex A55 at 1.8 GHz plus 4 times Cortex A76 at 2.4 GHz. This might not be the same for all boards. More about that later. The GPU is a Mali G640 MP4. It has got a neural processing unit of 6 tops. The RAM is LPDDR4X with either 4GB, 8GB or 16GB. It has got 2.5GB Ethernet with power over Ethernet support. And it has got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. So here I have got SSH access to the ROG 5. So I have opened 3 terminals, one with HTOP. Another for benchmarking and another for checking the temperature. So from the temperature I can already say it doesn't overheat. This one is using a fan and a heatsink. And with that it doesn't go much over 50 degrees. So I've been waiting for the release of this board for many years now. So I think the first time the RK3588 was mentioned was more than two years ago. I've ordered the boards more than a half year ago. But I am waiting for it to be released. I don't want a test version because there can be things wrong with the test version. I want to wait for the release board so I can tell you what you can expect. So there are problems right now. There are problems with the GPU and some other things. I hope that can be fixed for the release. So they are now having a debug party with many developers to see what bugs there are and to try to fix them. So I'm not gonna talk about the bugs much. What I can tell you is that not every CPU is clocked at the same clock speed. So some are clocked to 2.4 GHz with the big A76 cores. While some other boards are only clocked to 2.3 GHz with the same cores. You can read this CNX article about it if you want to learn more about this. I can tell you that the board that I am testing is only clocked to 2.3 GHz instead of 2.4 GHz. So that is 100 MHz less. It will not make such a difference. But do hold this into account. So now let's go to the results of the benchmarks. Here are the 7-zip single core benchmark results. So for the ROG 5, the A55 cores at 1.8 GHz got 1871 MIPS. So this is almost 1 million instructions per second per MHz. So compared to the A53 of the Kadasfim 4 at 2 GHz, which also does 1878 MIPS. So the A53 has to be clocked 200 MHz higher to get the same score as the A55. Then the big cores, so this is really impressive. So the A76 core at 2.3 GHz does 3196. So this is a crazy score. 
So if we compare that to the Kados Film 4, it's A73 cores at 2.2 GHz. This only got 2403 MIPS, so a little bit more than 1 million instructions per MHz. But the A76 does way more. And then for the Raspberry Pi 400, which is an A72 at 2 GHz, so overclocked, does 2070 MIPS. So this is also close to 1 MIP per MHz. So the A72 core from the Raspberry Pi 400 performs almost the same per clock as the A55 core from the ROC 5. So the A76 is really an awesome beast. And here the Nico D Blender benchmark results. So here the ROC 5 really shines. And why do I like the Nico D Blender benchmark? Because this can use 100% of all cores, so it doesn't matter if cores are unequal in performance. So many other multi-core benchmarks can't do that, like the 7-zip multi-core benchmark. When there are cores with an uneven performance, 7-zip will not use 100% of all cores. So for that the Nico D Blender benchmark is good, so the ROC 5 did it in 3 minutes and 19 seconds. The Kadas Fim 4. Also an 8 core board does it in 5 minutes and 3 seconds. Then the Oldroid N2 Plus did it in 5 minutes 54 seconds. Do know that the Oldroid N2 Plus has its cores clocked a little bit higher than the Kados Film 4, while it has 2 less cores. The Oldroid N2 Plus its big cores are clocked to 2.4 GHz, while the Vim 4 its big cores are clocked to 2.2 GHz. Then the NanoPi M4 with RK3399 does this in 9 minutes and 50 seconds. The Oldroid HC4 does this in 16 minutes 35 seconds. And the Raksha 0 does 15 minutes and 52 seconds. So this is a huge result. The Rock 5 is 5 times faster than the Raksha 0. So my conclusion is that the CPU of the Rock 5 will be very powerful. I hope they can fix all the bugs and that I soon can have my board. I would like to use it as a desktop replacement because my PC consumes way too much. Certainly when it is hot like now it is an extra room heater and I don't need it when it is 40 degrees outside. So good luck to the beta testers who have a board. Thank you to the bug from Armbian for giving me access to his board. So thank you all for watching, I hope you liked this video, see you all later, bye!